Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I want to go ahead and take a few moments to explain why Go is a good language to learn. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best. If you want to know the best language I think right now to learn, is it's probably Python. But if you're a systems level guy that's looking to build the next server uh, or some other uh, high speed uh, project that, that you need to, to build that you're maybe thinking about using C or C++, uh, Go is definitely a language that you should consider learning before you make that decision. Besides uh, the ridiculous mascot, which he's really not bad, he's not as cool as a python, and definitely not as cool as the Pearl Camel. Um, however, with Pearl 6, um, that is an entirely new logo, which uh, is not cool at all. Pearl has a uh, butterfly for their Pearl 6 implementation, and a lot of you noobs out there probably don't even know what Pearl is, but uh, Pearl is uh, still a, a popular language uh, somewhat and still has quite a bit of jobs out there for it but Perl 6 uh, has pretty much been its downfall since it's been 15 years since it was supposed to come out and uh, never really did I think um, the, the creator Larry Wall has recently stated that um, he's like optimistic it's gonna come out by the end of the year but we'll see uh, we've heard that for like 15 years in a row now so uh, anyway Go um, has a little mask guy, he's a gopher, and one of the reasons why Go is is really cool is it's actually one of the few languages that's not built on top of the C programming language. So like uh, languages like Python um, or C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, they're all C based languages written on top of C. So um, with Go though, it's actually a completely different language that's not dependent upon C. And it's uh, brand new, it was developed by Google in 2009. And it was actually um, created, well, one of the creators, there's several creators, but um, one of the major creators was this guy named Ken Thompson, who was um, the original creator of the C programming language, along with Dennis Ritchie over here on the right. Uh, but Ken Thompson's like a hardcore hacker since like the 70s, and the dude's super smart genius. Um, but he's had a big part in, in building Go in a way that um, is much more efficient for what we need a programming language to be. Now, Go, um, when I say what a language needs to be, um, nowadays, computers have multi-core processors. Um, they have a lot of processors. Back in the days of, um, you know, even C Sharp or Python or Perl, a lot of those web languages were built around uh, the entire premise that you have one core. And um, you didn't, so it really wasn't made for parallel uh, processing or uh, concurrency. Um, now, what Google Go thrives in is actually having a concurrent environment. Now, if we look at the uh, definition of what concurrency is, it's when two tasks can start and run and complete in overlapping time periods. It doesn't mean that they're be running at the same instance um, because that's actually what parallel programming is. And, and Python offers parallel programming. C Sharp offers parallel programming. Um, so a lot of languages have parallel programming built into it, but it becomes a real pain in the ass when you have multiple processors uh, or processes that could be running simultaneously uh, in parallel to each other and they could be relying upon each other so you always have to um, be very careful and always have to work around um, uh, basically uh, shortcomings and, and headaches when you're doing parallel programming but with concurrent programming and with Google Go specifically um, concurrency is built into its core so it, it takes advantage of all uh, the cores that you have available using um, what what they call channels or go channels and um it just it works out of the box and the language was specifically built for that so it's perfect for any sort of high load like server type systems like if you're going to write the next apache web server you're going to want to probably do it in go as opposed to c now when um google was started in the, in the mid to late 90s their entire stack was actually built and run on Python for a very long time. In fact, it wasn't until like sometime after 2001 or 2002 that they actually started switching over a lot of their back-end processing, like hardcore processing, to C++, uh, C++ libraries um, because they needed a lot more speed than what Python was able to offer at the time. Now, there's been major headways in Python since that time, um, but we're talking about like one series Python when now we're in like 3.5 I think is about to release or maybe even more than I think it's 3.5 but the bottom line is Python was um, almost in its infancy back in those days um, and and um, so they're, they're slowly getting rid of the C++ libraries over at Google and they're actually converting them over to 
uh, Go based code. And the reason why they chose Go is Go is uh, very verbose. Um, so to do simple commands in Go, you typically have to type in uh, a lot more than you would using something like Python or even an object oriented language like uh, C sharp. Python's object oriented too, but it can also be uh, functional. Now, even though it's not C based, it still looks kind of like C and uh, it's kind of ugly sometimes. Um, but it, like when I say verbose, it means that you have to type out a lot of stuff. So like in this particular case, just to be able to print a line to the console, it has to actually import uh, a library to be able to do that. Now Go is very rich with the amount of libraries that it has built into it. So it has um, libraries for like uh, HTTP, um, J JSON, regular expressions, uh, opening files, reading and writing to output. There's basically a large library that it has. But one of the things that you'll notice is you always have to import anything you want to use and it, it will actually not compile if you don't uh, or if you have imports that you're not using because it's uh, it, it wants to be as bare bones as as humanly possible another thing too is it has a uh, built-in Unicode support so um, that's actually something that is uh, you know it's always it was always been a little bit of a headache having to deal with Unicode especially if you go back to like Python 2 series compared to to Python 3 um, but Unicode is, is fully supported in Go even um, where the Python developer um, Guido Van Rossum, the founder, uh, even had his employment um, Dropbox are actually moving a lot of their processes over to Go too, uh, because if you're really looking for speed of execution, uh, you, you really can't beat it. It's going to beat almost uh, every other language out there, and with its built-in concurrency support, it just it, it allows you to run a lot of simultaneous processes and. Um, and just do it with with a lot with much greater ease than with other languages. So it's been a few years since Go came out, and they're slowly expanding upon it. Um, there's a lot of different weird things about it, like it doesn't have built-in exception handling or anything like that. Um, some of the like comparison operators and stuff like that is very uh, very foreign uh, or alien, I, I should say, compared to a lot of C-based languages. Um, so there is a bit of a learning curve with it, um, but once you actually learn it, uh, the good thing about Go is that you can't do a lot of trickery. Like um, with something like Perl or even C Sharp with link statements and uh, a lot of like dependency injection containers and uh, or IOC containers, and um, even in you know some of Python's class-based uh, programming, it, it can be very difficult to follow along with a very large project. In fact, that's really a headache for any programmer dealing with a very large code base that it takes forever to try to figure out what things are doing. Somebody's cute and they try to put, you know, eight statements, you know, concat concatenate it into one line so it's almost impossible to understand what the hell it's doing. Um, and so a lot of languages are famous for that, JavaScript too. Um, so with Go, though, you, you can't really do any of that trickery. It's verbose, meaning you have to spell it all out. So that way when somebody comes along, and it could be you know, 10,000 lines of some Go program or even 100,000 lines, you should be able to pick up wherever it is, and there shouldn't be any sort of you know, foolery going on with, with the code. It should all just make sense um, once you un understand uh, the Go syntax. So that's actually one of the reasons why Google adopted it, because even though they hire really smart developers, um, they want developers to be able to hit the ground running. They don't want them spending, you know, five months or six months trying to understand the large code base. Just enough time for them to move on to the next job uh, or take a company, you know, job at some other company or God knows what. But the, the bottom line is, it's always a challenge, even for the best programmers, to learn a very complicated code base. And Google Go is aimed um, not just at concurrency, but also at ease of development for uh, developers. Now, in my opinion. I don't think Go is the best first language to learn. Uh, there's not a lot of jobs out there for Go at the moment. Um, there's not a lot of companies using it for the most part. Like you could probably come up with a list of 20 or something like that, but it's not like their entire stack runs on Go. Um, if you're looking for a job to get in the market, I mean Java, C++, um, Python, C Sharp, I mean that's really where it's going to be at, or, and obviously JavaScript for the web. Um, so I don't think Go is like a good first language for anybody, but I think if um, like if you go with Python, you learn uh, a functional slash object oriented language like Python, which is easier to learn, uh, or a completely object based um, language like C Sharp. Uh, I think that should be like the first option for new developers. And then if you're going to get into the web, your second option is definitely JavaScript. Uh, really should learn that in conjunction with um, 
with what you know Python or C sharp or whatever web based server side language you're going to use. Um, but after you've done that, after you've gotten that under your belt, I think Go um, is is a a definite um, a good move for any sort of systems hacker you know ultimate control type language um, I think go would be a better option than C or C++ because it has the speed it compiles just like those do on multiple operating systems whether it's Windows Mac or Linux and um, one of the biggest pluses compared to like C++ or C is that go handles garbage collection so if you don't know what garbage collection is, ultimately it's about managing your computer's resources, uh, specifically memory, to clean up unused references that you have in your program after your program has executed that reference. If it's no longer being used, most um, languages out there today, like C Sharp or Python, the, the compiler automatically removes those pointers and it frees up memory. In C++, uh, it doesn't do that for you. You have to manually do that. It you can run into just hellish nightmares um, with with memory leaks and um, just your program crashing uh, because of garbage collection issues. So Go actually handles that for you, and that I, that's honestly the number one selling point for me. But anyway, guys, um, that is the reason why I think Go is a good language to learn, not the best, especially for a new programmer. I think new programmers should learn Python, um, and I have a video uh, explaining all that uh, and there's a lot of basis on why Python's a great first language and really a, a great language to even get a job in right now but um, aside from that uh, Go is definitely uh, an interesting language that we should keep our eyes on because it is growing in popularity pretty quickly in the last couple of years. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Bye.